Hey everybody, Zian over here from Nintendo Life. Now for the most part, I think when it comes to gaming, I, th I like to think that I make fairly sound, reasonable, good decisions. I I try to do my research and, and, and pick up games and play games that I think I'm going to be excited about. When it comes to making decisions in the video games themselves, I'm usually trying to be a good guy, but sometimes I may make a bad decision and it may send me spiraling down a negative path, like in uh, the, the that series that sounds close to Mabel but uh, exists on a, a platform that is not Nintendo. Those decisions aren't always the best. Sometimes we make bad decisions. Decisions that we regret, wh whether it comes to buying a game or, you know, just, just playing the game itself. And so to discuss some of these decisions, we brought on some extra special guests. Guests that you'll never, you're never going to believe that we got these people. Say hello, Alex. Hello, it's Bilbo Baggins from The Lord of the Rings. Uh, I'm... Uh, excuse me. Hold on. Hold on one sec. Uh, it, we actually got the wrong Alex Give for this video. Give me the ring, video. Frodo. Oh, no. This is... All Give right, me the well, ring, Frodo. We can deal. This is, this is going to be fine. Um, Alex, did you happen to hear who else we have uh, joining us in this discussion today? I, I can't believe it, man. I can't believe we got him. Yeah, we've got Harry Potter from the Ron Weasley series. No, no, no. I think uh, it's supposed to be John Cartwright, I think is that... that I'm not prepared for Harry name. Potter. <laughs> I'm not prepared for this. Who, who who do we have on the other line? Just just, just bring him in. Who is it? Bloody o, bloody o, Harry. It's is that Ron Weasley? Yeah, Alex said Harry, but I'm Ron. <laughs> bloody o. I can't do this. <laughs> Zion, I'm filled with regret, so I'm ready for this. My I regret this is, intro. <laughs> yeah, I mean... my, my life is to the brim of regret, Zion. I'm ready. Oh boy. Uh, okay. So, Sweet baby Ray's. So we've actually had this video uh, in our pool of video ideas for a few months now. Maybe, maybe even, I don't know. It could have been a year. It's been it's been there a long time. Uh, but actually, over on Twitter, I think it was uh, one of our very kind viewers, uh, Flapjack, uh, recommended that we that we do this video, and it was crazy because it was like it was almost like they had insider knowledge or they they knew that this was on the on the dashboard. But uh, I swear. They... Or it's almost like we've often talked about our regrets in previous videos. That's a good point. Maybe we've brought it up, yeah, at, at one point. But <laughs> uh, but so here we are. We're here to chat about uh, all of the decisions that we wish we could have changed uh, when we were kids or even as adults. Uh, so I guess since uh, I I'll start out uh, to, to lay the, the groundwork here. Uh, so so have you guys have you guys heard of a little game called Cubivore on the GameCube? Indeed. Yes. I have only because I know it's rare, and I want it because of that, because I'm a moron. I understand. John, have you heard of this game at all by chance? I, I have. I've never played it myself, but I've, I've seen it. I've seen the title. So I'm sure you can inform me more about that. Yeah, I, I wish I could tell you more about the game itself. Uh, but uh, so basically it's, I think it was released fairly early in the GameCube's life. And it's kind of like a uh, pet raising. It's like a Tamagotchi, but an entire video game. So imagine uh, it's like maybe a Viva, Pin Viva Pinata before that, uh, where you're just raising these monsters and they have the ability to eat each other. And uh, so maybe it's more kind of like a, it's maybe it's like a, I guess Viva no, Pinata. That sounds a lot like Viva Pinata yeah. to be fair. <laughs> Uh, but so I, I remember reading about it in a magazine or seeing it online or something back in the day and was always intrigued by it. But it was published by Atlas and I think it just didn't get a very high print run. And so over the years, it was like always on my list. It was one of those games that I was always searching for because it was just weird. And, and that's the kind of stuff that I, I liked back then, but still now. And uh, when I was working at GameStop, we had the ability to look up games by a product. Like you could look up... Uh, for instance, I could look up Cubivore and find out if any uh, stores amongst like the five or six thousand stores, if any of them had them in the U.S. And it was incredible because it allowed me to get so many cool games that I never would have gotten otherwise. And usually we were supposed to use this tool so that way we could uh, order in games for customers. And we'd have to call up the store and be like, hey, hey, uh, Buster at store 715, uh, do you happen to have Cubivore on the GameCube? And he'd be like, what? On the GameCube? It's like 2008, bruh. Uh, and uh, so he would, he, you know, they'd go look for this game. And, and so I ordered in a lot of stuff like that. Um, but obviously I worked at GameStop, so I didn't have the most disposable income to buy everything. But but so I ordered in Cubivore. I got it. Uh, it was complete in box, and I, I think I paid like twenty or thirty dollars for it. And uh, I was so excited about it. Uh, 
but for some reason, I never, I never played it. And I, I, I don't, I don't know why. I, I have no good excuse, uh, which is why this is a big regret. Uh, and so then, uh, at one point, uh, when I was working at the, the other, like the local game store that I was not, I wasn't at GameStop anymore. Uh, I think the game was worth around like 150 bucks. And so I ended up, I ended up selling it because I needed money for, I don't know, bills or because I wanted to go do something with my friends. Who, who knows why? But when I was at the game store, we had the ability to. Uh, hold games in the back like we had our own employee hold area and then we could buy them back for 15% above what we sold them for so I put Cubivore on the back and hold so it was basically like it was like I just took out like a small loan and I was just going to pay interest back in on it you know and so I put Cubivore back there and the next day I kid you not like I don't I don't think I've ever had a discussion with somebody about Cubivore before just in in the entirety of me existing uh but the next day somebody came in and asked if we had Cubivore on the GameCube Oof. and and they were from they were from like an hour out of town up north and I remember that that town that they were from too was like they didn't have any game stores around there and I was just like man this person's co-. like I get this like if I was this person and they had Cubivore, you know, like I would, I would want them, like I would want them to buy it. Like I wanted them to have every opportunity to play it. Cause I, I was that person at one point and I, I tossed away my opportunity. I owned the game for years and didn't play it. And so I was very kind and I was like, I kid you not, like we have a copy and it's incredible shape. And so I pulled it out of the back and I sold it to them. Not, I didn't make any money off of that. You know, the store profited and all that jazz, but, uh, but I sold it and like, I, I'm so glad that I was able to give that person the game that they were looking for. You know, the game that I searched years for. Uh, but it like to this day, like I still, like have never. I I don't know what the game really plays like. I don't know if it was if it's worth my time. I don't know if I can recommend it. I'm just like, I had an opportunity and I completely threw it away. It's like, I'm glad you know at the end of the day, like I think that the stars aligned and like it. it I was meant to sell it. That person was meant to come in and buy it. It all worked out. Like, but darn it, like I I'm never gonna own that game again. Cause I think now it's worth like four, five, six hundred dollars. Last I checked. You gave it a good life though. An alternate version of this story is you said to him, No, we don't have that game. And he walked away <laughs> and you kept it and bought it again later. I think you'll you'll feel far more regret doing that. I, I suppose that's that's fair. I don't know. But I, I don't know. It's worth a lot of money, John. I, I, it would eat away at me, I know. I, I would hate, like, I'd, I'd, I'd wake up at night thinking, oh, that guy, he came an hour out of town. You say that, but you could have Cubivore. Now, then then I... <laughs> you, you're right, though. Like, if that person came in and they asked for it and I said no, and now I still... Like, there's... I sold a... A place to, when I was at GameStop, this I feel really bad about this. This is the kind of stuff I live with, by the way. Is this is another regret? Uh, a, a kid came in and wanted to buy a copy of Winback on the PlayStation Two. I did. I I've t- I think I've told you guys this story in private, but never in like a video format. But so the, the vaults. This this kid came in and wanted Winback on PS Two. Like he pulled it off the shelf, and we. This was probably like 2009, and I think the PS2 version probably came out in 2001, 2, 3, and it was a port of the N64 version. But we had a, a new copy on the shelf for $20. And, God, guys, I feel so bad. I'm, I'm like, I feel really bad about this story. Like, um, so, so he comes up to the counter with it, and it's the last copy. So it's, it's gutted. It's like been opened, and it's never been played. But it's been opened because it's the display copy. And so so not only that, but I scanned the game to, to sell it to him. And this kid's probably like, he's like 10, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, I scan the game, and whenever you scan a new game in GameStop's system, it will tell you if you have a pre-owned copy available for sale instead. Because GameStop makes more money on the pre-owned copies, so GameStop wants to push the pre-owned copies. And I think it was like... Two ninety nine for a pre-owned copy, and I didn't tell him about it. I let him buy the new one because I wanted it to go away. Like our PS two <laughs> section was so small, and I had to sort it all the time because people were always messing it up. And uh, the the new PS two section was so small, and uh, 
And I just, I think back, like I, I just greedily wanted it off the shelf. And I was like, nobody else is ever going to come in and buy this copy of Winback. And, and in hindsight, I should have accepted that fate for that game and like let it be. But instead I like took advantage of this kid and like for corporate You're a monster, greed. aren't you? I know. Admittedly, you think about that, this that, story, that is far better than the outcome I was expecting. I was expecting you to say you sold him a pre-owned copy for the price of oh. the like original game. So I, I'm not I'm not a criminal. Um, but, but I, but I'm I, not a criminal. I just occasionally break the law. It wasn't. I wasn't doing anything outside of you know. I'm not going to defend what I did. I feel bad about it. It was really mean. I think the the reason I feel so bad was because it was a kid. You know, like that kid could have yeah. had another seventeen dollars to go spend on more copies of Winback or something else out of the PS2 bargain bin. But instead, I was like, this kid's excited about Winback. I'm gonna let him be excited about Winback. And to be fair, he was. Fully expecting to be able to buy the game and a slide whistle and a slice of moon pie, but you stop that. Yeah, no, no pretzels from the mall for you, Jimbo. You you just get <laughs> you just get win back. And, and to be fair, I think the the PS the the you the pre-owned copy probably did not have the box and manual. So maybe at the time, maybe I was just doing him a solid, and I was like, nah, that kid's he's not gonna want that. Like he he needs the manual. What if he gets stuck and he becomes a collector down the road? He's gonna be glad he has it. But no, I had I had selfish yeah. intentions in mind. It was all about cleaning well, up. Many that ten storm. year olds are complete in box only guys, aren't they? Oh, like, yeah. there's, there's no manual. It's not for me, baby. Dude, that's why kids don't buy physical games anymore. <laughs> but that's that's enough of my regrets for for now. Well, what a uh, who's who who's got one that they're that they're thinking about? <laughs> I've I've got one that um I've mentioned a number of times on the channel, but uh I, I, so I'm just gonna get it out of the way basically. Um, on my 14th birthday. Um, I got some money from my parents and, you know, various other sources and stuff like that. Not loads of money, but it was enough to buy a brand new GameCube game. And I was, I was well up for buying a brand new blooming GameCube game. So my parents were like, well, do you want to go to Game? Which is the uh, local game shop in the United Kingdom, which sort of technically still exists, but basically doesn't. And so we went there. We went all the way to Sirencester, which is miles away. And we, you know, I went in and I was like, my God, you know, I, this was a rare occurrence for me, even at 14, to be able to just walk into a game shop and buy a brand new game by myself without my brother contributing or anything like that. And I saw that there were two new GameCube games staring at me. <laughs> brand new releases. Uh, well, relatively brand new releases. And they were Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Mm -hmm. I played the hell out of Pokemon Coliseum. Is it just me or was that game really, really hard? I, I don't remember it being that hard. I remember getting stuck halfway through. Maybe I was just a, through. an idiot child. The yeah, combat's very slow, isn't it? Because both Pokemon take... Well, there's like Everything's a full battle, and all the Pokemon do those very slow moves. So it takes a while to get through. Maybe I confuse tedium with difficulty. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, but there was, there was Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, which is um, renowned as being even better than Pokemon Colosseum. I didn't know that at the time, but, you know, it's generally, you know, received very, very well. Next to it... There was Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> and you know which one I went for, because this wouldn't be a regret story if I went for the obviously better game. So yeah, I picked up Shadow the Hedgehog instead of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, because I genuinely don't know why. I was 14, it was probably an edgy thing to do, or that's what I believed anyway. So yeah, I bought that instead, and I got the game home, and I was like, this is, this is cool. And that feeling didn't last um, as long as I would have liked. I mean, you because can't... Because it's a very, it's a very middle of the road, very average game. And it's, it's very entertaining. Don't get me wrong. There is, there's, um, it's very dense in its entertainment factor, but it's also very dense in its tedium factor as well. We're back onto tedium. I mean, you can't be blamed for being the age you were and like and even the era as well you know i i can't say i know what the hype surrounding shadow the hedgehog was back in the it day it was pretty big to be fair yeah oh my god i've just realized that was the first half of my life well yeah so it, it's so long ago don't even worry about it alex i mean i will worry about it i don't have pokemon xd gale of darkness and i haven't had it ever and oh, i want yeah. it that game's expensive and it's worth, now uh, i don't know how much it's worth but it's too much it's, it's probably like much, 120 quid or something like that. 
Pri price charting claims that a sealed Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness would be around seven hundred and fifty dollars. See, Alex, it, don't, don't even crackers. Don't even worry about it. You would have opened it. <laughs> you would have played it. You'd probably have better memories. But uh, there's a there's one here pre-owned for Shadow the Hedgehog. Fifteen pounds, no bids. <laughs> Dude, you never know. Someone might look at it and be like, you know, the condition of that Shadow the Hedgehog. That's that's near mint. Maybe not, but who knows? There's someone out there for yeah. sure. There's I've definitely, I've definitely paid more money for a game because it's in better shape than the other. But John, name one of your gaming egrets. God, where do I even begin? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I know, right? I guess. I'll start with one because Alex retold one he's told before. Um, this is a very quick one that I think I've mentioned like three times now. But when I was a child boy, I had um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for the Dreamcast. Oh no. And no. that was in an era where Capcom were making these brilliant fighting games. There was like Rival Schools and Street Fighter uh, and so many great ones in that era. And JoJo was one of them. And I had no I had no idea what JoJo was back then. Like, JoJo's resurgence, uh, at least in the online space, feels quite recent. But yeah, back then, it, it was more like a Japanese thing that was kind of finding its way in the West. Um, so I got this on a whim, because I found it really cheap in a local used game store. And I thought the cover looked cool. And I played it for a while and really enjoyed it. But then Finding Nemo came out for PlayStation <laughs> 2. And I was like, oh, I, I love the movie. This is going to be even better, right? For um, God's so sake. to to afford this, I had to trade in a couple of games. I think I traded in JoJo was definitely one of them. I can't remember what else was there. Just a bunch of lesser titles, I think. But the problem with JoJo is that is now like a two hundred pound game. So my regret isn't avoiding <laughs> a game that is expensive. My regret is is giving it away. I, I can see how that would sting tremendously. Did you at least enjoy Finding Nemo? I'm not saying is it good. I'm saying did you enjoy it? No. <laughs> no, that game, that, no, I didn't. That game sucks. I got that for Christmas yeah. one year too, and it it was it was de yeah. depressing. They just they take like um ten or twenty second clips from the movie to use as cutscenes, and it just transitions to this really cheaply made game. Yeah, it's not good. Do you still have Finding Nemo? No, I traded that in. <laughs> uh, not for God JoJo damn. though. <laughs> not for JoJo. I think that's worth like three hundred pounds now. It's got to be. Gotta be. Dude, I, I bet if you would have went back and been like, hey, um, Finding Nemo sucks. Can I get my games back? I bet who, if the employee was working that you sold those to, you know, they, they're they probably like, hey, yep, JoJo's mine now. <laughs> no personnel, <laughs> kid. I, I don't think JoJo's even worth that much then. So I, I must have traded it in for like five or ten pounds, I think. Um, but I, I bought it for... Like I, mean, I, I was a kid with my with like pocket money. I think I bought it for like ten pounds. Yeah, maybe at the not time bad, you were not like bad at all. Maybe you thought you were winning. On the on the same note, just very quickly, um, I've only got three major regrets I can think of, um, and one of them is um, yeah, I went through a period when I was in college, so about sort of sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Um, I went through a period of uh, trading games in that I thought was stupid and old and baby games so that I could get some fancy, swanky new games. And I traded in Super Mario 64 DS, Mario Kart DS, and I'm sure other games as well. Oh boy. And I, I traded in numerous games, loads of games, to get to this amount of money that I needed in order to purchase Fable 3 on the Xbox 360. <laughs> And not only that, I got the limited edition version. Oh yeah, don't you? So you I have still... to trade in even more. I've got like I've I've got the box still. I I can't get rid of it. It's a reminder to me now. It's on my shelf to remind me never trade in a game again. You never know what you might miss. I was very similar to Alex growing up, where I um I didn't really get much pocket money. So most of what if I were to get a new game, I'd have to trade in old games and then buy them used. So. I, I had like a few games that I loved that I kept around, like those evergreen multiplayer games. But for the most part, I'd be trading in almost everything I had to get new stuff. So my, my collection now is more stuff that I've rebought over the years. I have very little actually from my childhood collection. For for me, I, I traded in a lot of games as well, but I definitely remember being very fortunate when, like I, I was an only child for eight years and that I think kind of helped me just get like I, I was pretty spoiled when as a kid for uh for the 
uh, for the status of my family, I suppose. Uh, I, I was fortunate that I got to keep all of my Zelda games, but one of my biggest regrets, which I feel like is probably, everyone probably feels the same, uh, was like getting rid of Pokemon games too. And not only for uh-huh. the fact that, like I have all of the Pokemon games now that I did when I was a kid for the most part, I think. And I like, I've even been fortunate enough to find like complete in box ones at fair prices and whatnot. Uh, but I just wish I still had the save files to like go back and see like what I named my Pokemon and like which ones I used. Like what was my team when I beat the Elite Four for the first time? Um, Cause like I have memories oh, of like- Raichus. <laughs> I probably did have a Raichu. Like I I had a phase where I was like, Raichu's way better than Pikachu. Uh, but, I mean, uh, to be fair, he is. So true, I say that, he. That, uh, you, you're right, you're right. You can get Lady Raichus, of course you can. Yeah. But I, yeah, I just like, I, for the life of me, I, I think I chose uh, Charmander as my first starter because like Charizard was in all the marketing and was this cool like dinosaur dragon thing that breathed fire and like what's well, not to like as a kid uh, but uh, but then I also have memories of like having Squirtle as well at one point or like having a really strong Blastoise and like I don't know I just like I, I, feel, I feel like you guys can probably like feel the same about that but uh, I just wish I would know like I wish I had I wish I could just go back and look at it because like sometimes since I still have my old Zeldas I'll still when I, whenever I boot those up I'll find like a save file from my mom or I or maybe if, I, if I'm lucky my brother as well uh, or maybe if I, I lent it to a friend or something they erased one and you know but but for the most part my mom's files are still all on there and it always brings like a smile to my face to see those and it's uh, it's crazy how like you just can't I guess it's just like memories and like photographs. You can't really replace those with like, uh, you know, like if you get a new game, like those save files aren't going to be on there anymore. I have so many save file regrets. Like, uh, you've brought especially with something else cards. up for me as well, which I'm going to have to share in a moment. <laughs> yeah, 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 go for it, guys. Uh, w- on, on a lot of systems, like the Dreamcast in particular, a lot of save files aren't just one consolidated save file. So, like, if you have multiple Sonic Adventure save files, they will appear on the memory card, like all of them. And I was trying to clear some space, and I had like three Sonic Adventure 2 save files on there. And I couldn't work out which was which. So oh, I was no. like, I'll just take a gamble. You know, what could possibly go wrong? And the one I deleted was my primary one with all of my oh. child that I've been raising. And uh, I, I no longer have anything, like, I have no remnants of my original child gardens anymore. So I've, I've built them up over the years, but because there's so little space on a VMU, I ended up just deleting them again. So yeah, I have none of my childhood chows uh, to show these days. John, my my regret is basically exactly the same, but on the GameCube. Damn. I don't I don't know where it is. I, I had the primary memory card um, that I used for all my data that had my primary chow on it. And I, for the life of me, have no idea where that card is. I've, che- I've checked all the game cases, because I know you can put them in there. Uh, I-, I have no idea where it is. And that means that I lost my four Chaos Chow, including my very first, which um, I managed to somehow give a French name, and I don't quite know <laughs> why. Um, I think maybe I just saw it written down, and it begins with an X, so it's- it seemed cool. It was um, Xavier, which... Um, I mispronounced terribly when uh, when I had the uh, when I actually had the chow, but um, if if I could get him back now, I'd pronounce his name correctly. He would love that. I'm sure he would. Honestly, that's I I feel bad like talking about this, and you guys have probably already seen it, but I still do have my original Sonic Adventure 2 save file. I couldn't oh believe it. God. Yeah, that's what reminded me of this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It's- See, on the sun is setting where we are. It's getting very depressing in here. <laughs> I will say it, it is very special to go back and see them. Uh, it, it, the moments, you know, like I did have some moments where I wanted to like, I had all these crazy thoughts about like, I'm going to go like, I'm going to get a chaos chow now finally. And I'm going to, I'm going to raise these chow up. But then I finally found out the qualifications for getting a, a chaos chow and i'm i don't think i'm going to do that anytime soon but i wish i wish i could uh but or wish i had the time but but yeah seeing them was really cool so i i i feel it's like losing your children kind of in a way uh <laughs> i mean thankfully they uh i mean i i have a feeling you may feel slightly differently if you have children <laughs> like actual human children yeah yeah that's how invested you are in your chow i guess yeah, if you don't have kids, it's like losing your kids. How's that? Is that better? 
Uh, speaking of speaking of memory cards, so I was hanging out with my friend Zach at. Uh, uh, he he lived down in in a, a town called Wisconsin Rapids for a little while, and uh, we were playing PlayStation One. We we had like the whole day to just hang out and do whatever, and we we were playing Chrono Cross. And I think I I must have I think I was staying the night that night, and we made it I don't know like five or six hours in or something, and I must have brought my PlayStation over and all my games and stuff, and we realized we didn't have a memory card, like at all. I just, I didn't bring one. He didn't have one. And we made so much progress in Chrono Cross that we didn't want to lose it. Maybe we like beat a boss that was frustrating us or something. I don't know. But, uh, but so we ended up, we left the PlayStation on and we, we walked to a, a game store that was close by in town and we ended up selling multiple of my just loose games because I, I kept all my PlayStation <laughs> games in like one of those disc binders, you know? Uh-huh. And so we uh, we ended up selling a bunch of games for uh, a memory card. And I think I ended up trading in like King of Fighters 99, uh, oh. Medieval 2, uh, creatures, and then Inuyasha, the like fighting game. And the only reason I re- That's some cool games. Yeah, I, the only reason I remember some <laughs> of, some of those was because I ended up finding boxes and manuals just empty at my grandparents' house in storage, like uh... a few years back. And I remember selling Inuyasha, but I was like, those other games must have been part of the trade in too. But but I ended up buying one of those. I don't know if you've ever seen the PS1 memory cards that have like two uh, memory cards built into it. Like you push a button and it switches to the second, oh, yeah, like the flip yeah. side. So I ended up buying one of those and I still have it and use it and I still have save files on it. So that's good. But uh, but I feel so stupid having to like <laughs> just having to trade in games for a memory card. Like I could have just I, I was a kid. I had the time. I could have just played back through Chrono Cross. But I, I don't know. It was like just what uh, what made me justify that i have no idea but it was stupid i regret that <laughs> i feel like we've all been there with memory cards like um th- there were some games i just replay over and over again because i couldn't save my game what one regret i do have that and this is uh, related to time rather than something you can get back with monetary value uh halo 2 on windows vista so oh i i played through halo 2 on xbox um when when i first got my 360 i went back and played halo 2 and then it came to Vista, with achievements, with HD visuals and all that, and I decided I'd, I'd, I'd play through it again to get all the achievements. And I nearly did. So on my Xbox profile right now, if you scroll all the way down, you'll eventually find Halo 2 for Vista, <laughs> and it will say 950 gamer score. There's one achievement Oof. missing, which is 50, and it's a really and I, it's a really simple one. It's just play every map on every game mode, which I'm pretty sure I did, but it just didn't unlock for wow. some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got all the other achievements. I've got like beat the game on legendary. I've got like get overkill and all that. But just that one is missing, and there's no way to get it anymore because the servers are down for all of those like Windows Live games. So there's just that one achievement missing, and I can almost relive that as well because Halo Three on 360 is shutting down next week, and there's one achievement I'm missing, which is get like I think it's get a killing spree with a ghost on one of the DLC maps. That's the only one I'm missing, and I have a week to get it. So I'm going to try and get it. <laughs> Dude, you have to. Just not to relive the pain. Yeah, it, to it's be um, fair, it doesn't sound ludicrously difficult. It's not like getting a Mythic Medal or something. Depends how many people are still playing 360 Halo 3, I guess. True. I mean, I'll happily log on, if you like. <laughs> yeah, do, I'll do, fire do, up the old 360 for you, John. Does, is, is the final week. I guess people will probably be giving it a farewell. Yeah. 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 Does it have to be actual Halo 3 on 360? Like, it can't be the... You, yeah. you can't play with someone who's playing Master Chief Collection, right? No. Darn. No, no, no. Darn, darn. Well, I'm, I can't help you then, either. <laughs> <laughs> I have two remaining regrets, um, one of which is definitely not Nintendo-related, but is still gaming-related. The second of which is kind of gaming related, but much more obtuse. So the first one is um, getting Assassin's Creed Brotherhood for my 19th <laughs> birthday. Um, like that game, I really loved Assassin's Creed 2. It was amazing. You know, I played the first one and then I went to two and it was like, it was a watershed moment. It was amazing. Fantastic. And so I thought to myself, Brotherhood, that's going to have to be great as well. And... It is so by the numbers in comparison. It is so more, so much more rigid. And the, the things like, the, the one thing that I remember is Ezio 
self well narrating his own actions all the time <laughs> and like i just remember like i don't know falling into a pit or something and there's all these pillars and stuff and i knock a pillar over and it just leans up against something and Ezio was just like now i have a route up and it's like one that's r route is is like not the italian pronunciation is oh well actually it might be i don't know but i was annoyed because i i, I didn't really know the uh, the uh, pronunciation route i've only ever known root um and at that point and also why was he narrating everything he was doing <laughs> it felt it took me completely out of the experience and it's a minor thing i know but i i sort of reached that point and i was just like I, why I, I've wasted my birthday present by asking for this? Yeah, like, even critically at the time, it was getting panned. Like, uh, I mean, it's it's following too, but it was clearly lesser in every respect. I think we all kind of have games that you probably regret getting for like Christmas or birthday, and it feels bad to trade in or sell a game you've got as a present. Oh yeah, but... I've still got it. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I've definitely traded in some presents I've had over the years, and Same. I feel bad doing it. <laughs> I, I googled it to work out the release year so that I could work out what you know what birthday I uh, birthday I got it, and I just googled Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and th there was a, you know in Google where you get the people also ask section, uh -huh. there was the top one. Is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood boring? <laughs> that's that's and it, fair. It links, to a, it, it links to a Quora thing. Is that how it's pronounced? I've, I've never said it I out think loud. So. And um, the question is, is Assassin's uh, Creed Brotherhood too boring? And the reply is, no, it is really enjoyable to play Brotherhood. Was that written by Ubisoft? <laughs> I think it must have been. <laughs> no, abs wh no. Why would you say that? Please go away. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that that was that. And the second one, the last one I want to mention, um, is uh, more of an apology than anything. Uh, a friend of mine at college. I can't remember your name. You introduced me to Assassin's Creed. You let me borrow the original game on Xbox 360 before Assassin's Creed 2 came out and I never gave it back to you. <gasps> Worse than that, I also sold you a Mac that I knew wouldn't be able to run World of Warcraft. Did you and sell that's it? that's all you wanted it for. Did you oh no! <laughs> it was a Power Mac G4 and it ran like nothing. It, it was a terrible computer. It could barely run YouTube. And I sold it to him for £60, which admittedly was probably, I mean, it's its not a lot of money, whichever way you slice it, but it was a lot of money back then. And I just remember him messaging me saying, it's not running it very well. And I was like, oh, it'll get better. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, so I so you really, really I honestly you feel really, really bad. Like, he, he, was, he was about to shake your hand and he was like, man, I can't wait to play World of Warcraft. And you were like... I know, man. It's gonna be great. Handshake. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do genuinely feel really bad about that. Um, but it's uh, uh, yeah. Not only that, but also basically nicking his copy of Assassin's Creed. Admittedly, he didn't ask for it back, but that's no excuse. That is always tough when, like, sometimes I've forgotten over the years that I'm borrowing someone's game, or oftentimes I, I let someone borrow a game and then I forget. But now I have a handy dandy list that I keep track of who I've let borrow Oh, I just things. don't lend anything to anyone. <laughs> or if I do, I, like, ask, ask it for it back the next day. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, oh, so... Get uh, Skyrim back. You must have finished it by now. <laughs> I know I've... Uh, the, the one last thing that I wanted to quick mention... Uh, I know I've talked about my grandparents quite a bit in this, in just in chats in gen general with you guys, but I don't think I've brought them up today at all. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't, but... Uh, yeah, but, you but, found the empty boxes at your grandparents. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. But so this this actually pertains to my grandpa doing a good thing. Uh, so I, I was so excited for Star Wars back in the day, like as a kid, you know, like who wouldn't be, right? And I, I went to, I went and saw Star Wars Episode Three with my, with my grandpa. Uh, we went to a midnight showing. I went with Zach actually as well. Uh, he gets oh, mentioned sweet. twice in this chat. I still have my original movie tickets too because I'm a, a hoarder. Uh, but, uh, but so, so we went to the movie. I loved it. I even, I loved the, the lava scene. I loved everything about that movie because I was naive. And, but so <laughs> I loved it so much that I wanted the video game. And. Uh, we ended up, I played the Game Boy Advance game. I don't remember if a friend had it or what, but I played that and really liked it and was like, oh, the PS2 game has to be so much better, right? 
Uh, I was wrong. Uh, the PS2 version <laughs> is is just a, it's another throwaway cash grab uh, Star Wars game, in my opinion. It was extremely short. I ended up finishing the campaign in like a day. And then I found out basically like beyond that, there's a versus mode, uh, which was like cool, but I, I don't think grandpa ever played with me. I got no enjoyment out of the versus mode. I was so upset with it that uh, grandpa tried to take it back for me to, to Walmart or wherever we bought it. And they wouldn't they wouldn't take the return because it was open and it was played. And, you know, that's that's how the story or that that's how it how it always goes with trying to return a game that's opened. You can't. And so. We ended up going to Johnny C Cards, which is the game store that I eventually worked at for seven years. And we ended up talking to John and grandpa like did his best to try to get John to give us full value for the game. And I don't think like looking back on it now, like that's not how business works. You know, like John, (laughs) John like didn't. Oh, he didn't have any connections with new game retailers or anything like that, you know? So, like, there was no way... The only way John was going to make money off of this was if he bought it for less and then sold it at a pre-owned rate, you know? And uh, I think we paid 50 bucks for the game when it came out, you know? And uh, so... So, but in the end, John ended up, John was very kind to my family. My, my, like my grandpa always liked him too. And uh, I think he ended up buying it from us for $35 in the end in trade credit. Maybe it was cash. I don't remember, but I ended up getting something more that I enjoyed instead. But, uh, but looking, you know, like I regret buying that game. I regret basically like asking or making my grandpa think that he had to do that for me in the end. But, uh, it, Looking back on it now, though, like it's it's one of those moments that I can think about, and like I guess maybe in in the end it isn't a regret now that I think about it more and more. But I just appreciate that my grandpa like put up put so much effort into trying to make that right for me in the end when it was just like little kid making bad decision with, when it comes to video games. But yeah, um, but there, I, there were so many yeah. licensed games I bought as a kid. And I just had to like convince myself that I liked them, even if I knew I wasn't <laughs> having fun. Like, I remember I bought uh, Monsters, Inc. for Game Boy Advance. Oh, and boy. And that didn't... It didn't have a save feature. Like, it, it had passwords on the GBA. Bloody uh, hell. That's a bit like uh, was... Simpsons Hit and Run. No, uh, Road Rage, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it was just really, really bad. But I just persevered through it because it was a gift. Um, but yeah, there's so many licensed games like that, which I just knew... I, I, I don't know why I kept buying them. I just guess because when you're a kid, you're invested in that Strangely, stuff. Strangely, I bought... I, I got basically no licensed games when I was younger. I mean, with exceptions, you know, like good ones. I think it's because my brother was so, like, heavily engrossed in the magazines. And they would have reviews and things like that. And we'd use that to work out what was good. So yeah, I think the only, like, proper licensed stuff would be, like, uh, Star Wars Rogue Leader. Which is obviously a good one, um, and I genuinely, Mm-mm. I genuinely can't think of any any others off the top of my head. We didn't, oh well, like Goldeneye, I suppose, but we we didn't buy licensed games, and I'm so happy. I had a lot of like fairly odd parents and SpongeBob games, and very very few of them <laughs> were good. <laughs> I think there's something about being a kid yeah. and just being naive and like wanting things to work out. You know, like you're just you just become blind to the the negativity. And and but also in in, in another uh, aspect, there were a lot of great licensed games back in the day. Like uh, I don't. I remember being really bad at Tiny Toons, Buster Bust Loose on Super Nintendo, and uh, like Aladdin like Aladdin and Lion King on like the Genesis and Super Nintendo, like they were from the right angle. They are good games. I think Aladdin was a lot more fun, but, uh, but you know, it, it kind of, it playing those games early on made us think like it gave us hope for playing other licensed games, you know? Uh, but, uh, but eventually, uh, I, I, f- I feel like the 2000s kind of era is just where licensed games are bad. Uh, and now I, I think we're getting to yeah. a point where some of them are there's hope for them, but it, it re- there really was an era where, like, they were just all trash, weren't they? It is always nice, though, to just buy a game knowing nothing at all and love it. Like, I, that's that's some of the... Those, those are my favorite games where I just pick it up off a shelf. It looks cool. Like, the, the box art looks nice. It's enticing. You bring it home, and it just ends up being a gem. Like, that, those are my favorite pickups. So, speaking of... Speaking of, uh... Of just picking up a game at, at random, you know. Uh, I think it, we've we've talked a lot. We've talked a ton. It's probably probably time to wrap this video up. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but one question that I wanted to ask you guys was, 
obviously this this whole discussion has been about like you know buying the wrong game or or uh i guess really that's that's for the most part what it's been uh but do, looking back at like kind of your the, the the like the holes in the in the in the library of games that you've played over the years do do i do either of you have a series that you really wish you would have played as a kid like you saw it on the shelf and you you always meant to or like you had you had an opportunity like you owned it but you just didn't play enough of it do you have any regrets like you wish you could go back and have played through the entirety of billy hatcher on the gamecube you know like is is there anything or, or like or a series you know like for me metroid is definitely one for me but uh um uh, but yeah do, do you any is there anything that comes to mind otherwise i i have one that i could start with if you guys want in my own way i have played the whole of mm. billy hatcher and the giant egg i could not do the final boss I don't know whether it's genuinely very difficult or if I was just an idiot child, but I tried that so many times. Basically, every so often I'd just come back to the game, try and do the final boss, fail, and, you know, then try another sort of like 10 times, continue to fail, and then try again in like a month or so. I've I've finished Billy Hatcher by my own accord. <laughs> Hey, I mean, that's impressive. My mom and I did not... I don't think we made it that far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I always regret not playing the Suikoden series. I, um, my local game store had this glass cabinet with Suikoden 2 in, and I always wanted to pick it up, but it was in, like, the Rare section, and back then, like, Rare wasn't necessarily expensive. I think Suikoden 2 was, like, £30 in there? Which, by today's standards, that's, that's a steal. But now all of them are super expensive, and I've never had the, just the chance to play it. And I guess they are on PSN. I guess you can play on PlayStation 3 or Vita, but I, I want a copy. I'm glad that you have been able to pick up some of those, like, dream games, you know, from, like, when you were a kid, like Earthbound. And you have you have Panzer Dragoon Saga now, don't you, too? Yeah. That's sick. Like, so, I mean, <laughs> you, can't, you can't have them all. Uh, but I, I see, like, I, I can imagine, like, that game has always, Suikoden 2 in specific, has always been just, like, one of those. It's been one of the holy grails of of uh of the playstation era and now it's now it's like a kind of unattainable for the you know it's it's not easily attainable i should say so yeah there's so many cool games in that cabinet they're, they're both uh, lunar silver star and lunar eternal blue and i've got i've got lunar silver star and sega cd but i want those playstation versions because they're completely different games um so yeah there's a, there's a lot i regret not buying back before the big ebay boom uh, what about you, Alex? Do you have a other than Billy Hatcher, which you 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 explained to us, you finished? Is there a is there a series or a game that you wish you would have uh you know that you have a blind spot in that you wish you would have played? Um, not enormously, to be honest. I mean, there are some that I sort of think, oh, maybe I you know maybe I it would have been nice to do that, but nothing major, to be honest. You know, I I had a lot of the big major games uh, for Nintendo systems just because, you know, as I said, my brother was really into the magazines. He knew the games that were going to be seriously good. I mean, I suppose I wish I'd played Conker's Bad Fur Day a bit more, if only because then maybe I wouldn't have had to have given it back to my neighbor and then I would have kept it. Um, that <laughs> happened with Banjo-Tooie. Um, that's the only reason I own it. And um, he never asked for it back. And I, th I even brought it up with him years later and he was just like, oh, it's fine. I asked him whether he had any of the other games. He, he sold them all at a car boot for next to nothing, which um, is probably one of his gaming regrets. Dang. Makes well, that, that's cool for you that you got to, like, save that game. Yeah, from... I got Tui. I just wish I got Conker's Bad yeah. Fur Day as well. I wish I could go back in time and buy a copy of Earthbound. Like, I want to see... I, I know Derek from Stop Skeletons from Fighting has talked about the fact that he swears that he saw an image online somewhere of, like, a bargain bin of Earthbounds for... A bargain, you know, and uh, I just, yeah, I can't even, I can't even imagine that world. So if, if anyone's ever seen that picture, by the way, please tweet at us, share it somehow. Uh, I would, I would cry, but love to see that. Uh, for for me though, by by the way, a series that I would I, that I've never really gotten into. Uh, I was actually talking with Ant Dude this morning because uh, he's playing Bug Fables right now, and I was like, oh my gosh, I I love that game so much. The characters and just the story in general is very, it, it's very silly, and like it was always making me chuckle. And uh, he was talking about how he's enjoying it more than, or uh, he he prefers the Paper Mario series still, but uh, but he's enjoying Bug Fables. And I told him that I I went into Bug Fables 
without really playing any of the Paper Mario games besides like Super Paper Mario. And he was like, what? You you work and you work for Nintendo life. <laughs> uh, and uh, but I guess, you know, like my mom had Paper Mario Thousand Year Door back in the day or maybe we rented it. I, I have like memories of watching her play it. And I love RPGs like I have no excuse to have not played Thousand Year Door or the N64 one. And, uh, and I have them both now and, and very much can boot them up and play them now. But I just wish I would have devoted the time to them back in the day. Because I think there's there's a lot there that I really would have loved. And uh, I don't know. I just I wish that was a series that I uh, knew more about. But uh, but I can't I can't turn back time as much as I want to. <laughs> well, maybe the time will come. So they're, they're not particularly long RPGs. Um, I, I think. Oh, no. Yeah, I think you'll find your, your time in your life for Paper Mario. Okay, cool. I mean, like the fact that it's that the first one is on Switch NSO two is really nice too. It makes it a little more uh, readily available than playing an, an RPG on an N sixty four, which I I can do and would love that. But uh, but yeah, maybe maybe I will give it a go after I play uh, AI of the Somnium Files after Metroid Dread. My, my <laughs> backlog list. Is That's like, the thing. The backlog just keeps going. It's hard to fit new stuff in, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, uh, maybe I'll play this game after I finish this one, and then you're like, what about this? Um, and honestly, by the way, I think the, to, the last last thing I want to say is I think one of my big, other biggest gaming regrets, too, is just not finishing games when I was a kid. Yeah. I would make it like halfway through something and then I'd be like, I'm bored. I want new game and would trade in three for, you know, the one or whatever. And it was just like, just finish the damn game, kid. <laughs> just just do it. Um, and I, I would just give up too often or get bored. And but I just wish nowadays I'm a lot better about it. Uh, but. I just wish I would have finished more games back then. But but that's enough about our biggest gaming regrets. Uh, of course, if you have some of, of your own, uh, it, it will sadden us to read them in the comments down below. But it'll probably feel good to get them off your chest. And of course, you know, we'll appreciate hearing from you. Maybe we'll get a laugh out of it if it's, uh, uh, if it's not like John's uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Finding Nemo story. Rest in peace, that, that, that darn game. <laughs> I hope you get one someday, John. <laughs> one day, one day. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, uh, you know what is not and will not be a big regret for you is clicking that subscribe button. I'm pretty sure you will look back on that fondly. And uh, ringing the notification bell doesn't hurt either. Uh, so thank you. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this this chat. I know you were the most special guests I ever could have had here. And I hope I hope everybody enjoyed listening to us ramble about these these bad decisions we had. <laughs> Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe out there, and we will see you next time. Bloody hell, Harry. I regret not coming to the platform sooner to get the train. Now we've got to fly in the bloody car. Oh, my old ring.